you know? But once again, just very honestly taking a look at the statistics, MIBR, they are so far ahead. And honestly, Copenhagen Flames, they are on the 88th spot in the HLTV ranking, and that is just too much, you know? That is actually too far down, I'd say, compared to MIBR. And with that, you know, we'll see this now in the knife. This is going to be the deciding moment. This is going to be the question. But is Copenhagen Flames going to be able to get that, um, you know, that knife kill now? Are they going to be able to get that start in the knife round? And with that, really get the decisive, well, strong start that they need. Get the preferred side in there, whilst MIBR maybe has to take a bit of a loss on the T side. It starts out well, and indeed, Copenhagen Flames. Yep, it looks... No! Oh, wow, that's a close turnaround there. In the end, it is actually MIBR that gets the knife round there. And for a moment, I really thought that looked in favor of Copenhagen Flames. That that was really going to be, you know, their their knife round, and that they could really start where they wanted to. But um, quite sadly, you're going to have to see here that that's not what that that's not what's going to happen. Well, let's see what it can bring to the table. Right now, it's going to be fur, of course, maybe the man to do some stuff. Before we start on this match, I saw some player or at least some people in the chat saying, "Well, fur is not going to frag so hard," but you never know especially against a team that you know might be aim-wise a little bit less proper than, of course, than the team you're going up against. And, well, let's see. Copenhagen Flames now starting on that D side. will try to make it work. They will bring those clocks into, hopefully for them, great success. Absolutely. You know, 20 bullets, 20 shots to kill, right? Isn't that the, uh, the mentality they should use? No, to be fair, you've got 20 bullets and only five players to kill. So you've got four chances every time. Just go for those headshots and uh, get the results in. It's a rapid B take, it seems, you know, going straight through apartments with some fire in their boots. The Flames bringing the fire onto that side. KNG here, he tries, but Taku is the one who has to hold it off, gets the first Ooh. frag. But look at this strong, strong B site take uh, coming in from Copenhagen Flames and only fallen along with TRK left alive. Well, that's actually a very good start for Copenhagen Flames. Of course, a Glock Rush on towards the B side would make it a little bit easier for yourself. It's going to be eventually an almost clean round. Only Taco able to put something in return for the MIBR side. And Copenhagen Flames now winning the first pistol. At least now they're doing well. And, well, maybe they can hold this on and streak it all together. It's going to be so far, it seems, MIBR not really in the best side of things. But they will force back as you would most likely expect. Yeah, absolutely. Also a bit more expected, I think, from a team like MIBI. You know, they uh, really just have that tendency to just kind of force it out and really go quite aggressively as well. A little bit like Namiga, I'd say. You know, they both have that sort of aggressiveness that you can kind of expect from them, that you know them from. And also the kind of the plays of MIBI are leaning into that aggressiveness. They have those players that can really frag when they need to and that have that, you know, the, the right, so to speak, to be that aggressive. It's going to be Monks to be hit up slightly. He's going towards half HP. And that means at least a little bit of damage done by MIBR. They're not playing all too aggressive. They don't really want to force the issue at this moment in time. As we're going to wait for them to at least make their mark. Oh, actually a very good shot coming in right there. Taco going down in favor of Basso. And Copenhagen Flames now once more going for the B side. It will be a B split. Coming down, of course, with a three-man play. Either from short with one actually maybe going for a flank rather than the B take. KNG sits by in the F's area. Will also go down Mertz and Basso with yet more frags. And Copenhagen Flames are starting off really, really strong. Surprising us as of yet. Leaving only TRK alive. And, well, he will most likely go for a save because Armor and Eagle and a smoke is still valuable in the round to come. And you don't want to give those Mactans any more money than you've already had. As, of course, it will now be that 2-0 lead in favor of Copenhagen Flames. And that is worrisome for MIBR. We'll have to see what MIBR makes of it if they go back now onto that third round. Of course, TRK not going to have much more of a chance. He's just waiting here by the uh, T-ramp on the A site. And we'll have to see what he makes out of it. Best he can hope for is an Exafrag healer there, but even then, Copenhagen Flames aren't going to fan out that far. They're just going to go for the wins now. They're going to keep the rounds coming, and MIBR off to a bit of a shabby start, I dare say. So I'm wondering what it will be, what it will become, and uh, how they will pull it off now in this, well, normally speaking, not so good round for them because they've still not got the, uh, the economy going with them. So it is even going to be pushed out until the fourth round, and who knows, maybe Copenhagen Flames can just keep the pressure on now, keep them... Uh, sort of put down, so to speak. The important thing so far is, of course, that now 
Copenhagen Flames is building economy. They're not giving too much in towards the MIBR side. They now only have, of course, a Deagle to really work with. And, well, that's only a little bit of armor as well. Copenhagen Flames has to move as a unit and they want to go for that A-Execute. However, there's a slight A-Stack coming down from the CT side. And that might spell trouble later on. The big thing is, the players are currently not on towards the side. So Smokes could cover them off and maybe a few Mollies as well will help you out on the Copenhagen side of things. And indeed, now there will be that Execute. One player on top mud and mid, of course. Maybe later on going for a flank as the arcade will be flashed and smoked off, just like the rest of his team. Trash can to be Molly, so if they go for a push, they will be tackled. But there will be a push with a little bit of a flash coming in. Following the first frag, he will fall soon after, as Fur was spotted as he dropped down. That means it's now a 4-2-3. KNG trying to deal some extra damage in, but so far they're not really making anything work. But TRK with a deagle gets yet another frag. And now we're back to equal numbers. The bomb soon to be planted on towards a default position with Taco still standing by and now rotating towards CT. Trying to at least spread the pressure coming down from MIBR. And it's very much about the uh, MIBR pressure staying low. Here goes Mertz for an engagement, but KNG comes in pretty well with the refrag. Pushes ahead now. They still got a little bit of time to play with. Taco and KNG. It's down to them to oh. really hold it off. And that's a lovely headshot. Now there is a refrag coming in. Taco goes down. But in the end, it's Dafu who can actually pull it together. Get the third round for Copenhagen Flames. Grab that AK with him. And take that on to the next round. But then again, that was a very good round for a full eco. With, of course, just the saved Deagle and armor for TRK on the side of MIBR. That AK shot from KNG, quite juicy, as you can see it runs more. Try to spray on towards the next one. Really hit his mark, of course. Crouching doesn't really help you in that regard. So, of course, the stairs will then be in the way. Now the lead already coming in quite hefty for Copenhagen Flames, but there will be now the first buy round to come in from MIBR as well. Two AWPs, one on Fallen, one on KNG. And most likely they will try to go aggressive quite easily as now Fur goes down in towards Palace. It's going to be TRK trying to at least do something in return, but as the player falls back, he has to as well. Once more, the player lead in the hands of Copenhagen Flames starting off quite easily, but then falling to, of course, at AWP. They're over peaking with not too much utility helping them out, and Dafu himself is also rather low. So there's a very good chance that MIBR will soon actually go for a little bit of a decent play and make it work. And uh, now we'll see how this turns out. It is uh, all good going so far on the CPH or Copenhagen Flame side, even. And I'm curious to see how long they will extend this for now. Honestly, I. Uh, See a very confident start for their T side. Contrary to our expectations, absolutely has to be admitted and said. But uh, MIBR, they, well, they do have that comeback potential at times. They can really show up here. Although at the same time, I think if there is, is a team that has historically historically been known to choke, MIBR is definitely one of them. Well, flashes, mollies, everything's coming down on towards that B-bomb side. It's going to be Taco with the first kill to come in on towards Basso. Taco actually getting a second on towards Mertz as it seems like Copenhagen Flames isn't really committing all that far. Fallen and KNG for the last two frags to come in as the first round for the CT side. At least now a good start to come back in. And of course, now also putting pressure on towards the Copenhagen Flames side. There will be most likely a pistol armor as it seems like a force buy would not really benefit them that much. He going once will mean that in the next round they can buy again with full AKs. Yeah, it's uh, kind of taking that calculated loss there and just playing for the damage, really. With that, MIBR stands, of course. Also oh, okay. All right. Well, we see Lil's coming in along with uh, the Tech 9. Copenhagen That's Flames. Interesting. Yeah, Copenhagen I think they're Flames saying MIBR doesn't have much economy. That's so if true. we can just reset them now, then we can put some pressure on. But you know, MIBR saved a lot of really good weapons. Yeah, it's it's an interesting choice, really. But we're going to see if they can continue keeping up the pressure. TRK, though, here. That's a solid close position. He can get one frag out of Manx refrag oh. quite quickly. Jabby opens it up well. Fallen falls, goes down. And so MIBR gets turned around in this round. You can see the 3v4 now. It's a one-man advantage for the lads of the Copenhagen Flames. And the bomb plant has also gone down now. 3v2 left over. Taco here coming from jungle. Looking around and seeing if somewhere he can actually get a potentially round winning frag. Very nice spray down there. Takes out Manx. Makes it a 2v2. Let's go to Picasso checked up from the CT area. Fur with yet another frag of himself. He is already low from the get-go. Leaving only Dafu alive. Now will be flashed out at that ramp position. 
They're tapping the bomb. He has to peek, and he will. And he will eventually fall to Fur as well, as of course he's standing by. He knew where the player would be coming from because he was delayed on this peek rather than peeking out early. And that was, of course, forced by the flashbang. Ooh. Second round to come in for MIBR, saving once more those double AWPs. They have ran in the previous rounds as well. And they're trying to now equalize the score. They now know that, of course, with a bomb plant, Copenhagen Flames will get a little bit more money, but still they now actually have to go on towards Nico, where we would have expected them to do so in the last round. Yeah, and I do suppose that the advantage is now, I believe after this uh, eco, they should still be able to buy well enough. They'll uh, also get that, I think, triple loss bonus at this point, if my quick maths are correct. So if they can deal a little bit of damage, maybe steal one or two weapons, then it should still be a solid buy for them in the next round. Starts off not too well, though. For his hold from Connector is strong. Triple Kale for him, and TRK finishes it off. Takes out Daffer at the end there, and that was solid play from Fur. Very strong connector hold, and with that now, MIBR getting the third round in a rapid fire round. The equalizer for them coming in. Well, follow up for sending by, but really banking on towards Fur to open things up and at least draw the fire as well. That was a really clean, easy round so far from the side of MIBR. Now equalizing the score, but up against a full buy. Maybe, just maybe, Copenhagen Flames can make it work with those AKs and the AWP on towards Mertz. Of course, I think people at home might also remember Mertz from the highlight of our good friend Pimp, once saying Mertz many times in his segment as an analyst. Dafu, if he jumps up, will spot a player on towards Palace. That's KNG sending by the AWP. Yet he doesn't jump up just yet as Taco now takes out Mertz as the AWP gone for Copenhagen Flames. And Dafu still not spotting out KNG. There will be a player as there's going to be Fur with yet another frag, meaning it is a 5-3 situation. However, Manx will be able to return. The AK in hand will make it work so far. There's so still far. at least a player behind, and Taco is holding an annoying angle. He will move off, he will go a little bit more close, as of course he doesn't really have any utility left. Fallen as well. He only has a frag grenade, and Copenhagen Flame seems to be executing towards that piece where only one player is standing, but look at the rotate. KNG pushed through Palace and said, you can rotate, my friend. You can go there, but still Fallen seems to be doubting once you go towards CT, but now with the smokes coming in, he knows he has to rotate, but will he be in time? Taco gets one on towards Basil, will get a second on for Spanks as well. Only Jabby alive in a 1v4, he will get one, might go for the second, he spots the second as well, but Taco is just too good. 4k for himself and a fourth round for MIBR. For a moment there, you know, it was uh, a potential chance for Copenhagen Flames, but the hold from Taco was exceptional. 4K from him coming in, and with that now, the Copenhagen Flames being one round behind. We'll see if uh, MIBR can continue this now. If they can start building up the pressure, building up the round advantage. But for now, it definitely is starting to look like it. You can also see that the Copenhagen Flames by Deagles, and really not much more than that. A little bit of utility to toy with. An armor by on Jabby. But we'll see now what they make out of it. Economy damage is the best they can hope for. And if that economy damage will be there, then there's a solid chance. But so far, it starts off good for MIBR once again. Look at TRK, KNG. Oh, TRK, make it a triple now. And KNG takes the second. MIBR play another quick round, a clean round. And we'll see if, uh, well, Copenhagen Flames with that is actually now going to be put down, if they're going to be kept down, because of course reserves are non-existent. And IBR, they just keep it up solid. Pressure is on. And it is a comeback game that we are going to expect now from Copenhagen Flames. This is what was scary to me. Copenhagen uh -huh. Flames, of course, now going on towards Mirage, a map they've only played once in the past three months, according to HLTV. Oh, really? And then losing the lead doesn't really help them all too much. Because now we see MIBR just running away with things, slowly but steadily. As you do see Fur now getting the kill on towards Manx as well. That's not the star they were expecting, but they're peaking solo. And what would you expect? It's going to be MIBR having, most likely, an aim advantage. Because, of course, they are quite a strong team, the number 16 in the world currently. And a new European powerhouse from Brazil. It's yep. fallen with a frag that will mean another player goes down on the CPA Flames side. And, well, maybe, just maybe, they can bring it back in towards this round, but it will be very hard. At least they have utility, but they just don't have the numbers. And you do need that numbers advantage sometimes. We've seen three V5s be won in the past, but Copenhagen Flames haven't really been able to prove themselves yet in that regard. So I'm afraid that so far I'm going to have to call this round already a kind of a win for MIBR now. 
And we'll see how that goes for here. Window hold isn't as solid as it could be. It's also some utility now that's going to cancel out that molly. And with that, he's even going to throw a nade as a response. Because how dare you try and molly me out of my lovely window position. Unfortunately, he fails his nade, however, but still, he manages to survive for the time being. 5 2 3, scoreline player wise. Still, of course, standing as KNG will be mollied up slightly on towards short. We'll extinguish it with a smoke just to keep some pressure on towards short, and he will try to get a kill. However, he goes low, and the pressure on towards the A side is now coming through. TRK currently in CT, now throwing in an incendiary of his own, and look at the time as well. 20 seconds, they're going for the plan. They get two kills as well. TRK ain't fallen, however. Beacon both get a frag of the realm, leaving only Basso alive. He gets one. Still two more players to fight within 10 seconds, and he can't. It's Taco with yet another frag and yet another round for MIBR, bringing it 6 2 3 in their favor. And their economy is already building. Multiple players on towards 10,000 plus before this round started, and they're just trying to get back on their four rounds to come on their first half. Copenhagen Flames, whilst they might have had a solid start to this map and to this first half, it looks to kind of have been gone now. It's still there, they've still got those three rounds to start it off on, but the pressure is really on to them now. MIBR has the potential now to really just put up one hell of a win streak here. I wouldn't be surprised if they push this out to perhaps the double digits even, but maybe, just maybe, Copenhagen Flames will find that comeback opportunity. They will grab it back and they will show us that they do still have the fight in them. Right now, there's also not a decisive advantage for MIBR just yet. It's only those three rounds. There is comeback potential here, but Copenhagen Flames is going to have to show up. They're going to have to start off with some solid economy damage towards the MIBR side. And from that point on, work it out, maybe recover a weapon or two, and then try and see if they can start to put the pressure onto MIBR themselves. Well, Deagle's in hand, even a Rec9 on towards Manx, but oh. they have to really get close to really make that work as well. A flashbang goes in rather deep, delays the side of Copenhagen Flames for just a little time. But look at this, one player actively holding off. That's Sako, he's really good! But he also needs some support from Short, and that will come in soon, but there will be smokes in the way as well. Sako, no being pressured, gets the first track, will go for a second one, but it will be Manx coming in with the attack 9. Two kills to come in for the side of MIBR, needs to be thrown out as now Manx goes really, really low. But his armor keeping him alive for the time being. A 4 on 2 situation. Copenhagen Flames still playing on towards the side, but not having a single weapon upgraded. As we now will get an M4 on towards Manx. Playing from the bench area, but all the players from MIPR coming from short, trying to move in as a unit. They will get a first, they will get the second. And there's yet another round going towards the CT side favor. And we expected them to be strong. But so far, Copenhagen Flames, despite having that pistol round, despite having those rounds after, are not able to bounce back at all. And the problem is, of course, MIBR, they've kind of got this pressure advantage on them. Now you can see, though, with the Copenhagen Flames, of course, at least they've got a solid loss bonus going on, you know? That is something that they do have going for them. Um, but still, it is a nasty situation for them to be in. MIBR can come back very strongly, and they can now build up their own reserves. You can already see a player like Fallen edging, or well, even being over that 10,000 mark, and uh, KNG along with TRK all edging so close along with Fur 2, and that makes it so tough for Copenhagen Flames. That gives MIBR too much of an advantage, even if they play a painful round and have to get a hard-fought win, they will still end up on top because they can just rebuy, and it's a danger for Copenhagen Flames. So far, I see them having trouble really getting on top of the sites. The plants aren't really being put down that often, and MIVR's hold on the sites, while sometimes a little bit sloppy, you do see them losing a player, one or two, is still too good for Copenhagen Flames to really fight up against. Well, we're waiting for Copenhagen Flames to at least try to jab at a certain site. Maybe Jabby will start to uh, go in with that AK soon, but so far they're trying to set up for an A execute. One player close by on towards ramp. That will be TRK once more having an aggressive angle, yet just a pixel angle. So the moment they peek, he will just fall back. Does he have utility? Yes, he has an 8. And of course, that will delay even more, with now also the rest of MIBR set and ready to possibly rotate. Utility now to come in from the MIBR side, but there will be a smoke once more by TRK. Hearing the pins being pulled from, of course, the utility. First kill comes in, however, on towards Shabby. He will go for the crash, and the bird also on fire. Will get two before falling. But Fallen is on side and he's under pressure, but still getting yet another frag of his own. Double frag so far, only makes alive. He will be spotted, or at least his barrel will be. And KNG just can't connect the shot just yet. Time, however, running out 25 seconds so far. And 
Well, Copenhagen Flames tried to do at least a nice execute, but it just didn't work out. They weren't able to get the players onto our side out of the equation. It's now the plan. Eventually will go in their favor, so at least that's a little bit of a payout. But now it's still a 1v3 first kill to come in. Max will get a second Solid. as well. Only KNG alive. He could go for the wall bang, but he doesn't want to show his position. He's currently still in connector. Now misses oh. his first shot, will be tagged up as well. Max is trying to play the time as there is no utility on towards KNG to actually get him out of position. Will this be a 1v3 clutch to win the round for the side of Copenhagen Flames? It's going to be an off versus off. It's going to be KNG trying to move in. He will drop. He will fall as well. 7 to 4. And it will be a round going in favor of the Danes with MIBR playing really sloppy at the end. Yeah, that was solid from Manx there as well, though. Some really nice AK spray downs and a deserved win there for him. Copenhagen Flames now being able to use this opportunity to really start the comeback. TRK here as well going down quite quickly at the start. Along with this hold from Fur, it was good, but sadly, I think that may have been kind of the start of the round there. At the end, it could have been TRK if he had been left alive that this round could have still gone to MIBR, but Manxit played it solidly, did a very good job, and with that, Copenhagen Flames get that deserved fourth round. We do see MIBR most likely taking a tactical timeout. Expecting, of course, that Copenhagen Flames will now have more motivation. They're already motivated. They're really wanting to shine against a team of the caliber of MIBR. And, well, MIBR now losing a lot of money, but will be able to rebuy. We'll try to bring it back in towards their favor with now an eighth round of their own. It will be hard, however, because, of course, you know that Copenhagen Flames has all the money in the world. They have the AWP save. They have the momentum. And I wouldn't be too surprised if Copenhagen Flames would go for a quick B-take. There's only one player usually anchoring. The other ones are soon to rotate, but if you can catch them off with some utility, maybe smoke, maybe some flashes, you just have to focus on towards Taco. And then the B-side could be a weak spot for MIBR. However, it Taco, just too strong of an anchor so far. Yep, exactly. You know, Taco definitely uh, been shining in that B-side. And it doesn't quite look like Copenhagen Flames will decide to go for that B-take this time around. Maybe they'll listen to you in uh, some of the um, coming well, rounds in the tail end of this first half, of course. We are in the 12th round now, and things are still looking quite advantageous for MIBR. Manx here pushing onto the site now, though. He can gain some control. Might catch out Fallen, but he doesn't in the end. Fallen does fall back at the right moment. For a moment, he could have been caught out with his flashbang and his Andrew's smoke, even, I should say. But it doesn't really end up connecting Basso here from Palace. I believe if Copenhagen Flames now successfully push onto the site, they can take this. They yeah, can have they're this. They're very slow. The bomb was in the ramp area for such a long time. And now MABR has been yeah, the, able to wrap the around the site. Yeah. And that rotate is now coming in. Of course, they still don't really have the position to contest this. But it's going to come down on towards some aimed duels. KNG now getting a kill as well as Fawn already taking down one of the players of Copenhagen Flames. Meaning that now it's going to be harder and harder. Merge with the AWP takes on one, but Jebby will fall in return. A 2 on 4 and they don't have the utility to really cover things off. Fur will then smoke CT maybe to bait something out. It's going to be Merch with another on frag. He will go for a peek on towards Jangle. It's going to be Taco with the last frag as well. 8 to 4 and now MBR are just way too strong so far. And Copenhagen Flames were happy to get around. And it's the only round so far granted by their opponents. I like that little rhyme, you know. MIBR were way too strong so far. Still, though, there was a chance there for a moment. I guess if the rap, you know, if the pace had been there, if Copenhagen Flames had actually gone to that site and committed quite quickly, but sadly it wasn't meant to be. And we are now on that eighth round, and it is that decisive first half advantage that they have in their hands now. They can play this out further, go for the double digits, perhaps at the end of their CT side. But at the same time, maybe Copenhagen Flames can come back. You know, they've got these. Uh, while well, this pistol by a Mac 10 there in the hand of uh, Basso, I believe that is, and. I think we've seen him shine through a little bit with that Mac 10, so maybe. KNG oh standing dear. by will miss his shots and he will be pressured. Still gets a frag before falling. Taco will be flashed out. Gurney still inside. Will actually go down to Jabby as well. It's a very good execute to come in from the side of Copenhagen Flames. But Fallen has a very good flick and Tarek also with a very good nade as well. 3 to 2 situation. Mertz. Of course, he's going to have a deagle in hand, but he loses his teammate. And now he's in the smoke. He tries to go for something, but TRK standing by to get the frag. And the round once more in favor of MIBR, but still, for the investment seen from the Copenhagen Flames, it was a very good payout. And they were rather close. They just needed to get those weapons in. Just possibly also a little bit of a cleaner hold in the end. It's, um, yeah, it's 
a solid attempt there, you know. They got the plant down this time as well. It's important to reiterate that too, but sadly MIBR does take the upper hand, you know. You have a player like uh, TRK who then comes in for the retake and he just gets the critical frags. And that makes it quite tough for Copenhagen Flames to really maintain their hold on the bomb site to really um, well, keep that going. And so far, looking at this buy now, it's a new chance for Copenhagen Flames and they've got only a few more rounds left in this first half to make it true to uh, try and bridge the gap between MIBR's advantage and their amount of rounds. It starts off well, Mertz takes out Fur. That's a good start of the round. They can maybe just use this now. They push onto the site eventually, but they're really going for the mid control this time. KNG can take out the palace presence from Dafu, and that equalizes the amount of plays as well. 4v4 now, and I believe you can see the players from Copenhagen Flames this time going for that short presence, and this could be the right choice as well. It's going to be down to Taco, but he is so strong! A 2k headshot even! And that means that it's just so tough for him. His hold on this site is impeccable. Basso now, he's pushing further up, but is he going to win this engagement? He sees the shoulder peek, and in the end, Taco does get fragged down. So this is once again a chance for Copenhagen Flames. Bomb still has to come in via short. But look at the flank. There's a player already coming yep. from the Yaps area. The other two are in market. And it's going to be Merz slowly moving up, and now also having to commit towards the plant. And of course, with more pressure coming down with the utility still in the hands of MIBR, mostly, of course, in TRK and Fallen, they will have to go for quite a stronghold. They do come in. Merch will be tagged up, but still gets a frag, but he will fall in return. Only Basso alive, and he's currently at the short pillar. He will try to peek in towards Apps first, and then try to get the player pushing out, but he can't make it work. TRK, the new player for MIBR, doing some really good stuff so far, but we have to highlight once more, it's going to be none other than our good friend. Taco to get frag after frag after frag. And uh, that makes it the double digits for MIBR. Makes them also way more decisive than uh, Copenhagen Flames so far. They've got that six round advantage on them. And honestly, just, I find this painful to see, you know. I do believe in Copenhagen Flames and you do want to see them win. And maybe, just maybe, their CT side will be a lot stronger. We'll have to see, I believe, so far. TRK goes, oh, well, you can see that uh, final kill there from in the end again. And in the end, the retake for the side coming in there. This is the last round of the first half. It's a chance. Fallen is hold on from windows being blocked out by the smoke, of course, as is tradition, I'd almost say, you know, for utility usage. I'll have to see if Copenhagen oh, Flames can it. Back shot on towards Jabby, who oh. now literally throws away all his weapons. And then he still survives, but Mertz has a frag on towards KNG. That's at least an opener. In favor of Copenhagen Flames, and maybe they can turn it all yeah. around. But we have to say, once more, double digits for the side of MIBR already seeming quite strong. And, well, Copenhagen Flames are just hoping that it can bring it back on the overpass, or as you said, on towards the CT side of Mirage, because so far they haven't seemed too strong. They just don't really get on towards the side. B, on lockdown by Taco. A, you have TRK just standing by close to ramp every time, and he at least gets one or two frags, and if he dies, well, they're still fur. They're still falling with the AWP. It seems to be almost impossible for them to come in as fur. They will now try to fire upon Manx, but, well, he can't make it work, and there will be yet another A execute to come down. Only one player standing close. That is going to be TRK in Sandwich. And what can he make of this? We'll see now. I don't really... Well, I find this one difficult to say, actually. You've got Copenhagen Flames. They do have that one-man advantage. Jabby, though, isn't that much HP left on him. But maybe, just maybe, this will be that last round. TRK, though, solid hold. And, oh, that's a delayed peek there by Mertz. He should have looked at that a bit earlier. Manx here goes down then by the oh. hands of Fur. That's a eagle shot and a howl. Well, one hell of a deagle shot, I should say. Burdo misses a critical AWP shot there. Takano comes in for a connector. It's the 1v1, and he sprays down Basso quite relentlessly, quite calculatedly. And that makes it the 11 rounds from IVR and only the four for the Copenhagen Flames. A nasty and tough situation for Copenhagen Flames. A seriously challenging second half that we will be going into. And also, I have to say, quite the rapid play as well from IVR, you know. Oh, this yes. was... Uh, uh, first but it was half. also partially due to Copenhagen Flames, often going rather, relatively aggressive. Yeah. The moment they went for an execute, MIBR was always standing by. They already had those uh, setups going. And one thing we also have to note is that whenever they did go for a quick round towards B, or it was expected, 
MIBR was already standing by with at least two players. In normal rifle rounds, Yushi was just Taco standing by, solo on the B-side, waiting for someone to finally come, which they usually did. And otherwise, there would still be that AWP either on towards window, and also one on towards shore to come back if they needed to. Mm, there were plenty of opportunities there, that's for sure. Do you think that now on the CT side, Copenhagen Flames are really going to pull this off? They really need to get the pistol. If they don't... I think it will soon be over because, well, MIBR is already building such a momentum, such an economy. Well, not really an economy right now, but if they do win the pistol, there will be just so much more momentum gained as well. It will be a very quick round towards that B side with one player faking towards A. And that might mean that, well, this would be another round for MIBR. Yet there are already two players standing by. One on top mid, one in window as well. There will be some taps coming down. It will be Taco, of course, opening things up on towards the B side. Two kills to come in, one in return, meaning the bomb will now go down, but look at this flank from KNG, will spot the player as well, it's going to be managed to fall down as well. Only Dafu and Mertz alive, and well, you at least have to try, right? You have to try something indeed. Dafu at least has that diffuse kiss as well going for him, so that's something. Just a few clean one-taps with your SBS, but I don't really see that happening anytime soon. Mertz here pushing up from... Oh, apartments. Oh, that's that's a solid start. Taco goes down. But the time is ticking, though. They're going to have to push onto the site soon enough. Dafu does actually get a frag there. But sadly, KNG and Fallen just finished it off. The pistol round goes to MIBR this time round. Of course, the T side pistol round did go to Copenhagen Flames. But now it is MIBR that takes this pistol round. And with that, uh, off to a good start on the second half. Potentially a decimating one for Copenhagen Flames. So far, MIBR just way too strong, which we sort of expected, of course, as well. We said MIBR, the number 16 on the world, just a little bit stronger than the number 88 currently, according to HLTV World Rankings. And with them already having experience against so many teams, against so many regions as well, there's little play styles they don't know and don't know how to play against. And Copenhagen Flames are now feeling that heat, feeling that pressure as well from the Brazilian side, recently turned into worse a European team. So yes. That's the interesting thing. Otherwise, I wouldn't have expected to see them here. Yeah, surprisingly enough, you know, I, I suppose, you know, a bit of, um, well, I guess there's, a, there's a, a sort of return to history there, right? Kind of a, l a link with Portugal uh, from in the past. Know your history, right? But we'll oh. see. Oh, dear. For takes out Mertz, and it's just, it's really tough for the playing to go against this, you know. Their buy is pistols at best. You do have this MP9 on Dafu, but for the rest, you know, it's almost a given that the next round at this point is also going to go to MIBR because they've got the plants in now. And in the meantime, you can see the Copenhagen Flames players dropping and only Basso left now. And, well, he's stuck here on the B site. He's not really going to do that much, I'm afraid. No, Basso just standing here, most likely to save his Deagle indeed because Deagle armor isn't... Too special, but at least it's better than just having a USB in the next round. Yep. And now running in towards the mech down of Fallen won't really help you all too much in the following round, because of course you will just grant him more money. 13th round now coming in for MIBR, and so far they haven't really done anything crazy. Just play how they normally do. Go for frags, they have been able to get them, because they actually move as a unit as well, to see your utility properly, and even when they go for the plant, the after plant is solid. Players holding every angle they didn't check before. Look at KNG holding towards ramp, just gets a frag, no problem whatsoever as the smoke then dissipates. And now we do see them in such a strong lead. Nine rounds ahead so far, and actually an eco being pulled by Copenhagen Flames, meaning that most likely the lead will extend towards ten rounds, with MIBR of course having the odds in favor on Vi.gg. Yeah, absolutely, those Vi.gg odds are also quite, I'd say, decisive if you look at those. You know, Copenhagen Flames seriously behind compared to MIBR. And uh, I did put that tenor in on... Um, well, a 2-0 for MIBR, Ooh, and I'm hoping wild. that I can, yeah, I'm hoping that I can actually catch up to you a little bit in the Caster Clash because I feel I have some catching up to do. Fallen though, he doesn't seem to catch up just yet. It's KNG who really does that work because look at that triple, make it a 4K. Delightful work from him. That leaves only Basso and Fur finishes him off rather quickly. MIBR take the 14th round and they were eco frags, but that was still a lovely spray down to see. Well, the Vaco stickers, of course, on that AK, and Fur just wants to get rid of it as he's being involved with a little bit of a cheeky death, but then KNG is being able to line streak up. them all behind each other in the lineup. So now it's 14 to 4. MIBR doing really well, as we would have expected. 
Now they just need to get to more rounds, and then they'll go to their opponent's map pick, which will be overpass. And that has to be Copenhagen's uh, Copenhagen Flames, their comeback, honestly. If they don't get it back on overpass, then I'm very much afraid that MIBR is a solid 2-0 going for them, you know? It's uh, their only really redeeming chance. Oh, for here, he's standing at the ready. But Dafu, actually, the aggressive peak works out there. I didn't expect that to work out as well as it did. Javi does take out TRK as well. And Taco can get that one frag. But look at this. Copenhagen Flames successfully playing very aggressively against MIBR. And uh, who knows, maybe we'll be seeing a repeat of this tactic happening soon enough. Although, I'd assume at this point that MIBR should see it coming if they try that again in the next round. Just hold on more solidly and get the frags instead of actually dying as we now have that 1v4 for K and G. He's already moved in towards jungle, so he at least has some position working for him. And I'm hoping that Copenhagen Flames is taking this into account that he could be here. He will be actually on the side with Birds on the AWP getting the last frag as well. Meaning we now have a fifth round in favor of the Copenhagen Flames. Trying to bring the heat! Trying to bring the fire as well because, well, they really need to show right here. Make their mark against MIBR. It is their time to shine and show what this lineup has in store. And with that, you know, Copenhagen Flames, comeback of, uh, of I'd say, definitely the day, if not the competition so far. I'd love to see uh, a good old reverse sweep, but I'm afraid that that still isn't going to happen. I do believe that this is only a temporary setback from MIBR, and we'll have to see now if they don't actually throw back their own aggression as a response to how, well, heavily Copenhagen Flames played against them, but doesn't quite look like it just yet. You've seen, we can see some utility being thrown out there. But the smokes are quite successful in delaying them. Taco here goes for the first frag. For a moment I thought that there would be the second, but that molly is going to be quite the annoying Smurt to push back onto the site now. And underwood it seems, or nope, further onto the site. Well, now we have the 5-2-4. Fur and Fallen slightly tagged up. At least they have that player lead now going further in towards this round. They're getting close to a possible map point. Of course, this is their map pick, and we would have expected them to play rather strong as the connector is now being smoked off. A B play seems to be alluring. Only one player around the short area soon to come in, as it will be Basso actually with the AWP holding the angle right here. Will miss his first shot, has to fall back quite quickly as well now, as they're trying to wait for something to happen. Flashes to come in, even blind. Blasso gets a shot, and that means we now have a 4 to 4 He's getting some help from Jabby as well, getting a frag in return, but he will fall to Taco. No scope to come in from Basso. As Fur is trying to bring it back, but he can't. Only KNG once more, trying to lurk around, but so far, he can't, because he's in a 1v3. This is hatch has been still not broken, but as the player peeks him, it's going to be Manx falling. KNG on the chase will miss the opportunity to get the frag in. On towards Basso, now actually getting the last frag as well. And that means we now have the 14 to 6. Copenhagen Flames doing some great work. And MIBR slightly struggling, but ever so slightly. Now on towards Nico. We'll just buy in the next round and try to win once more. They have such an incredible lead still. And they don't really feel any stress. That's kind of the, the problem for Copenhagen Flames as well, you know. If they do have to make a comeback here, it is quite the comeback. That lovely no-scope from Basso coming back in there as well, you know. Always a delight to see. And now, indeed, you can see the eco. I believe it's uh, almost a clean eco. There's only those eagles, and, well, it is MIBR. And uh, case in point, you know, TRK takes out a jabby with a 1D there, it seems. And, oh, Lord, who knows how many more there might be coming from the MIBR side now. Bring the heat, bring the deagles, and see what you can do in the route to come. Basso still having the AWP as well as Mur, so if those deagles would come in rather close, there would be a very big chance those AWPs couldn't really succeed. However, in the last round, we saw Basso do some great stuff, even no scoping Taco on the white fan while standing on towards jail. It's going to be Mertz, of course, still holding an angle as well, not really trying to force anything, but the scary part for me is that currently, Copenhagen Flames said, okay, we don't care about mid support, but they don't care about peeking it either. They leave jungle open. And that could mean that MIBR could have a little bit of a flank going, or at least get some pressure from their jungle position. There is a chance, however, they have left the hatch once more closed, which it was actually happening in the past few rounds, meaning that MIBR would have to make some noise to get that flank going. So far, we're still waiting. KNG later to flank through jungle, as he's standing by, already being boosted up, and the rest of his team will go for a little bit of a, a split. One in Palace, three through Connector, and one late on towards Jungle. Dafu is trying to jump around, but so far there's nothing to be found. 
And it's going to be MIBR Crep walking their way in. Nafu standing by with the M4 as well as his teammates. It's going to be Mangs and Info getting a kill so far. The bomb being dropped and look at the time. 15 seconds left. And the big thing right now for the side of MIBR is trying to die because they need their loss bonus. It will be Buster getting one on towards KNG as Taco takes down Manx and they now grab that bomb. But they don't have the time to actually get the round and Taco gets a frag and maybe he shouldn't have. But at least he goes down to Mertz in the end and now they have that loss bonus to buy in towards the next. As Copenhagen Flames have now gone on towards seven rounds. Solid from them, Copenhagen Flames. They are still, of course, seven rounds behind. So still quite a bit of work ahead of them. But MIBR now with this uh, full buy coming in is perhaps a um, solid chance that... You know, Copenhagen Flames won't take this back. I do expect the map point to come in here and to see that, uh, well, MIBR rather cleanly finishes out Mirage here so far, though. I mean, Copenhagen Flames have been putting in a good fight now, and by the looks of it, their hold is solid. That is a lovely frag, or, well, two lovely frags coming in from the Copenhagen Flames side. And who knows, maybe, just maybe, this is what they need. This could be... MIBR kind of starting to choke it out a little bit. And uh, that would be just a damn shame for them. But hey, deserved comeback then from Copenhagen Flames. Well, we're going to see how MIBR can finally bounce back. So far, they're just waiting, seeing what they can do later on. As we do see yet another frag go in favor of the Flames. The Danish team now actually getting some work done. And it is interesting to see them playing this well. And it might not be this well in everyone's regard, but seven rounds now most likely turning in towards eight. On a map you don't play that often, it's quite well, especially against MIBR. Now Dafu will go down to TRK. Do they have bomb control? Well, not really. It's actually at top mid, so that doesn't really help them too well. As TRK will now be wallbank, will go down to Manx as well, but he actually got a decent chunk of damage done. Tango with now what one frag wants to go for more, but it will be an incendiary. And at this moment, his feet, and he walks into it. He then almost oh, goes down, taco. grabs his knife, goes for the one tap, but he can't make it work against Jabby. Meaning, indeed, there will be that eighth round going in favor of Copenhagen Flames. Well, that's well played by them, I'd say. You know, it's uh, all down to, I believe, those opening two frags in the start of the round from Copenhagen Flames that really turned this one into their favor. We'll have to see. And, well, with that wonder if it is going to be MIPR that are going to keep giving off the rounds now. You know, you've got this uh, pistol armor coming in now, basically, which for MIBR is not really the best of buys, but uh, the best they can hope for now is the eco damage that they can do, take a, w a couple of weapons away from the Copenhagen Flames, or maybe even get that bomb plant in. But besides that, I wouldn't expect much more from MIBR in this round. Well, there will be those smokes now coming on towards the B side. Two players standing by from the Copenhagen side. It will be Jabby, the first frag, but Fur has also dropped. Basso is now getting killed towards Fallen. Jabby with yet another as those smokes are actually playing in towards his favor. MIBR is not able to peek as there will be only two more remaining. With Deagles in hand, actually a P250 on towards TRK, and he gets a frag on towards Jabby. At least it's something. But it's not all that much as they still don't really have a chance to win the round as now Basso gets a good tackle towards Fur to be held by Manx to finish things off. Only one more player and, well, that's a clean kill and that will be a ninth round for Copenhagen Flames actually now getting close. They were ten rounds behind at a certain point, but now they've halved that on towards a five-round deficit. Absolutely, you know, in the first half at the end of it, things did not look positive for the Copenhagen Flames, but now there is a solid chance, I believe, to see them actually come back on this. It does also all depend on how MIBR plays, uh, plays out even their buys, and if this is going to be another one where they lose two team members at the start of it. And that is a very good chance for Copenhagen Flames to continue, you know. We'll have to see they are trying again. Sausage some utility in the area of mid, but rather swiftly falling back. And the question is kind of, how is MIBR going to approach this? Are they going for... Well, you can't really call an aggressive push onto the site anymore because they are already so far delayed, so to speak. And I believe that it is going to be another sort of slow play attempt from MIBR. Maybe go via B apps if the player over there can get some control. But even then, Fur is more going towards underpass, so... It's up in the air. MIBR still has the luxury of time. They can still go just about anywhere. And we now see some players dance around a little bit. Still at T-Spawn, perhaps reminiscing the start of the round when they still had some more time on their hands. But now, slowly but surely, 
after quite a bit of utility has been thrown around, starting to move up on this A side. It will depend on Sacco. He'll have to get the first frag here. And he does succeed. That's Dafu taken out. And with that, perhaps just the start that MIBR needed. If Mertz's AWP shots don't connect, he gets flashed out. Menx, though, he does come in. And he can take out TRK, but that's a solid molly. That's going to force him back onto window. And now MIBR committing for that plant. The wallbang isn't quite there. Fallen knows that there's a player over there towards CT. But now it is a case of playing the after plant for MIBR. And they can use that time to their advantage. KNG quite aggressively looking for those frags, but now he can push ahead, take out Basso, the AWP player, and fall and following up with a 2k of his own. Rather swiftly there at the end, that round turned completely towards MIBR, and for a moment in that after plan, it could have looked a little bit positive for Copenhagen Flames, but the moment that they really pushed jungle there, that, you know, um, I believe TRK that was, actually went for those frags, it was pretty much done and dusted for the Copenhagen Flames. Well, let's see if Copenhagen Flames can bring it back. At least they will have still a somewhat decent buy to come in. Maybe it will work. Maybe it won't. We just won't know until we find out. At least the AWP twice. Once for Manx, once for Mertz. And that means we now will see if they can actually get those long angles in. So far, we see aggression towards Palace. Oh, Taco moving off at the wrong moment. Actually, also with a little bit of jump. Now they will go for the push. It's a 2v1, but still, he makes it work. Oh, Taco. Two kills to come in. And MIBR are making this work so far. It will be both Mertz and Manx, both with one frag. But still is a player lead in favor of MIBR there. Going to struggle. Manx with the USB go very aggressive. And they can't really do anything to stop this plant unless if they have a lucky shot to hit. One player coming from that spawn area. It's going to be Basso with a deagle and armor. But will he be able to get a frag? He will be waited upon by one of the players from MIBR who are low. One shot could do the trick, but KNG takes down Manx as well. Besser now going through Palace and, well, RJ, it seems like they're really not I'm gonna make it. I'm afraid, you know, for a moment I saw the potential. Basso does get a good frag on Taka that he's stuck in Palace oh. now. Oh, is this the clutch moment? KNG can play it defensive, but in the end, the spray down is good enough. MIBR win out this first map with a 16 to 9 score. The comeback for Copenhagen Flames was real for a moment. It was strong, but sadly, in the end, MIBR finished it out on, of course, their own map pick, Mirage. They got the knife, they got the pistols, and in the end, you know, clearly, MIBR here coming up on top. And that does make it interesting. Looking towards Overpass, the next map that is going to come up, what that is going to give. MIBR have that rapid style of play that really helped them out here, I'd say, on Mirage. But I wonder if on Overpass they're going to be able to utilize that as well. If uh, it isn't going to be Copenhagen Flames that might take the upper hand there. And two, I think, both of our surprise would push that to a free map.